So today we're going to be learning how to make candlestick charts in Python using the Plotly library. It's quite a useful wrapper around matplotlib and it helps us make stuff like this. As you can see, I can select a date range here. So let's look at the 2016-2018 you know, bull run. I can zoom in on any particular candle that I want. I can also take a price range like that. It zooms in on the vertical axis. I can look at any particular candle, see what the open, high, low, close was. I've also plotted alongside it a common indicator that people use, the 20 week moving average. So we can see how to do that. And you can, of course, turn it on and off just by clicking here on the side. And also note that it's a logarithmic scale. So this is a thousand, this is 10K. You know, if Bitcoin continues this rally we're on, it might go to 100K, so on and so forth. So how do we, how do we make this? The first step, of course, is to find a good data source. Now, the best one I found is CryptoDataDownload.com. If you go to their historical data section, you go UK, US and UK exchanges or whatever your region, you can click on, say, Bitstamp. And you'll get a big long list here of different cryptocurrencies. You can get hourly or even minutely data. So you can plot candles for different time ranges if that's what you want to do. But personally, I prefer to see longer term trends. So I'm going to download the Bitcoin USD daily one. Now it's free to download. You don't have to install anything or sign up for anything. So it's just download the CSV. You might want to delete the first row of the CSV as it might cause some problems. It's just like a, a credit to crypto data download. Okay, so let's get started. So we'll start a tutorial.py. And the first thing we need to do, obviously, is to read in the data. So for that, I'm going to do import pandas as pd. And then we're going to say data frame is equal to pd.read underscore csv. And then we need to go grab our csv name. So I'm going to use this one here from bitstamp. And then we can just put that in there. Okay. And then let's print that out just to make sure everything's loading and we'll see what happens. So Python 3 tutorial.py. There we go. We've got the open, high, low, close. We've got volume data in Bitcoin and USD, the Unix timestamp and the date. So there are going to be a few different things here we want to do to this data. The first thing to note is that it's the wrong way around. So when you're plotting a graph, you want to plot the oldest data first, right, on the left, and then the newest data last. Essentially, if we, if we don't invert this, we'll have problems with our moving average that we're going to plot later on. So it's best to do that first. So the way you do that is you just say df is equal to df.eloc, and then we can give that a slice, much like you would give a regular Python list a slice. And so this third argument here is like how many you're going to step through at a time. So you could set this as two, for example, and that would give you every other entry. If you set it to be a minus number, that means you're going to go backwards through the data frame or the list. And so this just means we're going to reverse the data frame. Next thing we need to do is we need to change the date column. We need to make sure that it is actually date time. Sometimes when you download a CSV, Python doesn't realize that it's a date time and you'll get some crazy graph where it draws like 10,000 dates at the bottom. I really don't want that. So we're just going to make sure it doesn't. And we're just going to set DF date is equal to PD dot two underscore date time. And then as an argument to that, we're going to just supply DF date. All right, let's just print this out, make sure it's all working. Yep, seems to be good by me. As you can see, the date has switched here. So we've gotten, it's just simplified itself, I guess. It's gotten rid of these zeros on the end, the time. Okay, so the next thing that we should probably do is plot all of this data on the candlesticks. So for that, we're gonna to need to import Plotly. So we're gonna import plotly.graph underscore objects as go so graph objects geo then we're going to do is we're going to create a figure and we're going to set that equal to go dot figure 
and then we're going to set our data so that we're going to use for the candlestick charts. That's going to be equal to go dot candlestick. So you can see this is within square brackets and then go dot candlestick within that. And then within the round brackets within that list, we're going to say that X equals DF date. So that makes sense, right? You want your date on the X axis. Then you want to put a comma after that. And now let's put in our open high low close. So open is just equal to EF open, as you might have guessed. We'll continue on and say high is equal to DF high. Same thing again. And now we just do the low and the close DF low. And then close is equal to df close. Okay. Let's just neaten that up a little bit. Okay. But now if we do a fig dot show, we'll get rid of this print df here. If we do a fig dot show, it should draw us a nice candlestick chart. And it will open in a default browser, whatever that might be for you. For me, it's Brave, might be you know, Chrome or whatever you've got installed. So we've got a nice candlestick chart here. It's not quite the same, the one that I drew, but it is perfectly serviceable. You can zoom in, you can look at the individual candles and whatever else you might want to do. So let's make this uh, a little bit prettier and better. So the first thing we're going to want to do is maybe get rid of this range slider at the bottom. Some people like it. I don't particularly use them. And so I'm going to get rid of it. And the way you do that is, well, we'll firstly close out of this instance and then we'll do a fig, fig dot update underscore layout. Now this is a very useful function within the figure. It's very, you know, if you, if you want to change the Y axis, the X axis, anything, it, it's probably going to be in here. So if you look in the documentation, you want to look for this function. And so the option that we're going to be turning off to get rid of the range slider is the X axis underscore range slider. So nicely named underscore visible equals false. All right, let's try that. There we go. Got rid of the range slider. Let's make a few more improvements. Why don't we? So I guess we'll put this in like a log format because looking at the price of Bitcoin over a long period of time in a non-log format looks a bit weird and you can't really see earlier price data. So for that, all you have to do is do a fig.update underscore y axis and you just say type equals log. All right. Try that. There we go. We've got a nice log chart here. So again, let's let's put a different theme on there now. Now you can look on the Plotly documentation at the different themes that you can have. I'm just going to put it inside here. So in the update layout, we're going to say template equals Plotly underscore dark, my favorite theme. As you can see, we have this nice dark theme now. Now let's add some Y axis and X axis titles to it. So what you can do is if this line is getting a bit long and you don't really want it to be, you know, off the page, you can just um, do another update layout below with different options and it won't overwrite the old one. So what we can do is we can do like a Y axis underscore title is equal to Bitcoin price USD. And then we can do a X axis underscore title. And we'll just set that equal to date there. All right, those should be visible. Of course, I forgot to put a comma there, I mistyped and put a dot. All right, so we've got our labels here. Let's now plot our other trace, so our 20-week 20 20 moving average that we're going to plot on here. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to add it as a part of our data frame here. So we'll say df 20 week moving average is equal to df close. We'll take the closing price here. Dot rolling and window equals 140. So it's 20 weeks, seven days in each week. So 140 days. We have daily candles here. And then we do a dot mean on the end. And then to plot this, because it'll just be a part of the data frame and it'll just be invisible if we don't plot it, we have to do a fig.add underscore trace. And then within this, we'll do a go.scatter. So it's just a scatter graph. And then even though it's a line graph, I'm not, not entirely sure why it's called go.scatter, to be honest. All we have to do is set our X and Y information. So X is going to be date here, DF date. Y is going to be DF, the 20 week moving average. And then we'll set a nice color in here. So we'll say line is equal to dict. Color is equal to, and then you have to type this in hex. So I'm going to use hash. E -O, e -O, e -O. That makes a nice white color. Feel free to pick your own favorite color. Inside this dictionary here, you can add lots of other options. Um, but I'm just going to use the color for now. And then we're also going to give it a name so that it's obvious that it's the 20 week. And so we say name equals 20 week ME. All right, let's plot this. Hopefully I've typed everything incorrectly. And there we go. As you can see, is the name here is the 20 week moving average. It's a nice sort of grayish white color, which is what we want. You can hover over it at any point to get the exact value of the 20 week moving average. And you can do, you know, whatever technical analysis you want to do at this point. You can see it holds very well as bull market support here. And so there you go, that's a crash course introduction to creating candlestick charts in Plotly. And with that, have fun.